Our final presentation in this session is entitled Morbidity in Children After Fetoscopic Endoluminal Tracheal Occlusion for Severe Congenital Diaphragmatic Hernia Results from a Multidisciplinary Clinic. It will be presented by Dr. Sfera from Johns Hopkins. Good morning and thank you for the opportunity to present. As most of you know, the total trial showed improved survival after fetoscopic tracheal occlusion in severe CDH patients. However, long-term follow-up is lacking, with the majority of studies focusing on in-hospital to six-month mortality. The purpose of our study was to evaluate short and long-term outcomes in severe CDH patients who underwent FETO. We performed a single institution retrospective review from 2015 to 2021. Our primary outcomes included mortality, as well as pulmonary, gastrointestinal, and neurologic status at the time of discharge and most recent follow-up. Our fetal patients consisted of those with an observed to expected lung-to-head ratio less than 30% with intrathoracic liver herniation. Our non fetal group consisted of those with a pre-specified O to E LHR, large defect size, and or ECMO use. Postnatally, all of our patients were managed by a multidisciplinary team following a defined institutional CDH protocol. After discharge, this collaborative approach continued in our long-term CDH clinic. This clinic mirrors the recommendations set forth by the AAP and is an integral part of our CDH management. So we analyzed a total of 35 patients, of which 18 were FETO patients and 17 were non-FETO controls. At early gestational age, the ODE LHR was significantly less in our FETO patient population. However, after the fetoscopic procedure, this had become more comparable between the two groups. At the time of birth, there was no difference in gestational age, birth weight, or APGAR scores. There was a trend towards higher cardiac anomalies requiring intervention in our FETO patient population, including one tetralogy of Fallot, one PDA ligation, and one ASD closure. At the time of birth, there were lower rates of suprasystemic right ventricular pressures in our fetal patient population, as noted by the green color. At the time of discharge, pulmonary hypertension had improved in both the fetal and non fetal patient population, with the majority of studies having no to mild evidence of disease. There was a higher ECMO utilization um, rate in our non fetal patient population due to our inclusion criteria. The fetal patient populations had an ECMO utilization of 56%. 100% of our FETO patients and 94% of our non fetal patients underwent surgical repair, of which the large majority had a type C or D defect. FETO patients were admitted for significantly longer at 112 days versus 48 days. At the time of discharge and at the most recent follow-up, there was a trend towards improved survival in our FETO patient population at 78% and 67% respectively. The median follow-up time in our study was five years. At that point, the use of supplemental oxygen had improved in both fetal and non fetal patients. The use of bronchodilators, inhaled corticosteroids, and tracheostomy use had improved in our fetal patients, but were relatively stable in our non fetal patients. The use of sildenafil, bosentin, and triprostanil improved in both the fetal and non fetal patients. The use of antacids was quite high in both FETO and non FETO patients, with 93% of FETO patients and 60% of non FETO patients requiring a PPI or an H2 antagonist at the time of discharge. This improved to 42% and 22% respectively at the most recent follow up. At the time of discharge, there was a higher rate of long term enteral feeding access in our FETO patient population. But at the time of most recent follow up, this had become more comparable between the two groups with a large majority of the patients requiring a G or a J tube. The recurrence rate was significantly higher in fetal patients at 28% versus 13%. This is comparable to the 17% recurrence rate that has been reported in prior reports. Finally, all patients were able to be weaned off their antiepileptics at a five-year median follow-up. Unfortunately, we do not have neurocognitive functioning data at this time. So in conclusion, in our small cohort of patients, we were able to achieve a 67% survival rate with the use of tracheal occlusion and multi multidisciplinary care. 
In addition, all of our morbidity metrics over a median of five years had improved in our fetal patients. Specifically, there was a continuous improvement in their pulmonary hypertension, decreased use of supplemental oxygen, and improved GERD requiring antacids. Finally, our fetal patients compared quite favorably to a group of non fetal controls that had improved ODE LHRs as well as smaller defect size. The strength of this study is it's the first demonstration of fetal outcomes greater than one year, which will be very important for prenatal counseling. As with any study, there's limitations, specifically our small single institution retrospective design, as well as the limits of our control group. Thank you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Hi, I'm David Rothstein from Seattle. And any data on what the trachea looks like in long term? I mean, I... We have some data, but nothing that's quantitative or measurable. Um, nothing that I had looked at for this study, but I can look at that going forward. Thank you. Morning. Good morning. Great talk. Shin Hiroshi, UC Davis. Um, I was curious about the um, kids that had cardiac defects that underwent fetal surgery, were those just missed on fetal echo or were they included as, as not so um, significant cardiac defects? So our exclusion criteria for the fetal um, was cardiac anomalies, so these were missed prenatally, um, especially the tetralogy of Fallot was the one that I was surprised pre fetal um, but it was an exclusion criteria. Augusto Zani, uh, sick kids from Tor Toronto. I really enjoyed your paper. I'm wondering uh, about the proportion of babies that were born premature, and if you had uh, um, also looked into how many developed neck, because this has been our experience. We have had a number of uh, premature babies uh, that had fetal and then and developed neck. Um, so we know that FIDO increases your predisposition to being born prenatally. Um, the median gestational age was 37 weeks um, with a range at 32 to about 39 weeks. Um, I don't have any data on the neck, but I can absolutely go back and look into it. So could that. it be that no one of your babies uh, developed neck or something I, you haven't looked into? I okay. specifically didn't look um, into Thank you. the neck. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the talk. Um, uh, promote Polygana from uh, Montreal. Um, really great data. I think it's really important now that probably fetal in use is going to increase. Uh, two questions. Um, how did you manage recurrences? Um, and what was the median time that you actually identified them? Um, and two, um, how many of your patients actually required fund application for, for GERD? Could you hear the first part of that question? Could you repeat your question? Sorry, Sorry the acoustics. Oh, so hard to Apologize. Um, so um, for the recurrence rate, could you tell me what the median age of first identification of recurrence was? And two, how did you manage it? Um, so the majority of the recurrence had, had were within the first year. Um, I don't have the specific median, but they were all within the first <clears throat> year. And most of them required reoperation um, with patch repair. Uh, Daryl Cass, Cleveland. Thank you so much for sharing this data. Um, one of the concerns about using ultrasound to select severity for CDH is just the accuracy of just simply using LHR. Can you share with us what the uh, rate of need, need for a patch at surgical repair was uh, at the time of com yep. maybe comparing the two groups, your non fetal and your fetal group? So the rate of patch repair in our fetal group was 100% and 84% in our non fetal patients. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.